All right, we do want to take uh, a little bit more of a look at the political and economic impact of the crisis in Egypt and that it's having really on Europe overall and really the rest of the globe. Could access to the Suez Canal become threatened as the situation continues? Well, joining us to talk about this is Niall Gardner. He's a former advisor to Margaret Thatcher and now the head of the Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation. Niall, by the way, advised the Bush White House on the role of international allies in Iraq and the war on terror. And he was recently named one of the most influential Britons in the U.S. by the London Daily Te uh, Telegraph. Uh, Niall, good to have you here with us. You know, Thank you. we were speculating what's got to be next for, for the White House and President Obama. Um, what do you think the U.S. needs to do specifically and really allies around the globe here in addressing uh, this continuing uh, developing situation in Egypt? Well, I think um, Barack's statement has basically taken the world by surprise. I think uh, almost every uh, nation in the West believed that Mubarak would stand, stand down uh, this evening. That's not happened. Uh, Mubarak remains in power. He will be uh, in power now, it seems, until uh, September. And the big question, of course, is whether the protests on the streets of Cairo will turn violent, and if so, whether the army will intervene. So it's a highly volatile uh, situation. And it places, of course, Barack Obama, David Cameron and key leaders in the West in an extremely difficult position. They've all called, basically, for uh, Mubarak to step aside. So uh, there's no doubt about it, an extremely uh, dangerous, volatile situation here. And so far, I think Barack Obama has been a bit like a deer in the headlights. And uh, uh, I'm not really yeah. filled with a great deal of confidence with regard to how he's going to handle this, uh, this unfolding crisis. Yeah, now I want to ask you about that because the president, uh, President Obama, hasn't really been entirely clear. He certainly hasn't said President Mubarak must step down now. Um, is that what he should be saying? I mean, is the U.S. playing this correctly? Clearly, you think that uh, there have been some deficiencies. Well, I think uh, Washington has sent conflicting signals. Initially, it expressed strong support for uh, Mubarak. It later shifted its position towards basically calling for him to, uh, to step aside. Uh, I think that uh, Mubarak has reacted very strongly against what he sees as uh, U.S. intervention. The White House is going to have to tread very carefully, not least uh, due to the fact that Mubarak is likely to be around for several more uh, months. And Washington won't want to upset, for example, um, the, the role that Egypt plays in the war on terror uh, as an ally of the United States uh, with regard to uh, the situation with the peace agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Um, so it, it's a highly complicated situation, but I think that Barack Obama needs to really develop a more proactive uh, big-picture strategy for the Middle East. Uh, he simply has not done so. I think this is a president who has been largely out of his depth, actually, with regard to the Egyptian situation, but also more broadly with regard to the Iranian nuclear crisis, uh, for example. And so uh, certainly for Barack Obama, uh, I, I think this is a very tense uh, situation. But uh, what we don't need to see necessarily in the next few days is Washington trying to dictate terms to uh, Cairo. That certainly won't, well, and sure, sure, uh, won't work, I think. And surely the president has been avoiding doing that, which is why he hasn't been entirely clear about what he wants to see happen uh, in Egypt with regards to President Mubarak. How, how key, though, is President Mubarak to U.S. Uh, strategy here, to U.S.-Egyptian relations? I mean, surely we have back channels speaking with Mr. Suleiman. Surely we're speaking uh, with heads of the army over there. Does President Mubarak really need to be in the picture? Well, like it or not, I think Mubarak is going to be in the picture for the next uh, few months. And it's important that uh, Washington engage actively, of course, with the key secular uh, democratic uh, op opposition groups inside uh, Egypt at this time. Also, of course, uh, the United States has very close ties with the Egyptian military. And uh, now is the time, I think, to enhance the engagement with Egypt's military, who, of course, will play a key role. And Washington can uh, project an overall message of support for the emergence of a free democratic society in Egypt, one that respects a free speech, a freedom of worship, freedom of religion especially, uh, and a society that will uh, certainly reject, hopefully, an Islamist ideology. Uh, my concern, though, 
um, is that because Mubarak is clinging on to power now, we could see a great deal of violence on the streets of Cairo, uh, Suez, Alexandria, uh, the major cities in Egypt, that this will uh, create uh, space for the Muslim Brotherhood to strengthen their position. So, so there's no doubt about it. I mean, these are dangerous now, times. Niall, what is it that the Obama administration needs to do potentially here at this point and, and other really global allies? What do we need to see from them at, that, at this point in terms of what's going on here in Egypt? Well, I think that uh, on the U.S. and the U.K., uh, European Union, for example, need to look at the big picture here. I think the, the goal is the establishment of uh, a fully democratic Egypt uh, following free and fair elections. And I think that the West needs to do everything it possibly can to bolster the position of secular uh, Democrats uh, inside Egypt. Uh, they need to isolate, I think, the Muslim Brotherhood. And only today, of course, the Director of National Intelligence here in the United States described the Muslim Brotherhood as a, a secular organization, which is a completely ludicrous uh, statement. Uh, and we need to see, I think, uh, you know, the end of this kind of appeasement of a very dangerous Islamist terrorist movement in Egypt. It would be an absolute disaster, I think, if the Muslim Brotherhood took over. So, so I think there are, there are a number of steps that can be taken. But ultimately, I think uh, what happens inside Egypt will be decided by the Egyptian people themselves. It cannot uh, be necessarily dictated uh, from, uh, from the West. Uh, and we are likely to see these protests uh, grow considerably over the coming days, and the question is whether or not the Egyptian regime resorts to the use of force against the protesters. If it does, then that could uh, perhaps speed the demise of uh, President Mubarak. Have you have you have you uh, heard any comments from Egyptian military that that's a likelihood? I mean, all we've heard so far from the army is that they would not attack any of the protesters. Uh, well, I think, you know, the Egyptian military is hugely respected by the Egyptian people. If they used force against the protesters, they would lose a lot of the legitimacy they currently have in the eyes of the Egyptian uh, people. But having said that, uh, Mubarak made this speech, no doubt, after cutting some kind of deal uh, with the military chiefs to remain in power. So. Uh, so, you know, anything could potentially happen here, but certainly if the Egyptian military decided to use force uh, against the protesters, uh, that would be hugely counterproductive, I think, for uh, the Egyptian government, and that would result in out outright condemnation, I think, from all over the world. All right, Niall, thank you so much. Niall Gardner, uh, he's a former advisor to, the, to uh, Margaret Thatcher.